Okay, so now I'm going to show you how the different pigments are produced. And then once you see how many different proteins are involved in the production of these pigments, then you can kind of understand how changes in the genes that code for these proteins can cause uh, different amounts and uh, types of pigments to be produced. So you st the starting molecule for all the pigments is the amino acid tyrosine, which I'm going to show you as this little white puffball. So the OCA2 protein is a channel that allows the tyrosine to enter the melanosome. So it changes in the structure and shape of the OCA2, or the number of, of OCA2 channels in the melanosome, are going to um, give you different amounts of the starting molecule in the melanosome. So once you have tyrosine, the uh, TYR um, enzyme, that's um, tyrosinase, is going to take the tyrosine and turn it into DOPA. So we're going to have it go into the active site, and then when it comes out, it's going to be a different molecule, which is DOPA. So now DOPA has two different pathways it can go. It can go this way, um, in which it's going to be, become the brown pigment and the black pigment. Or a different enzyme could work on it, and then it would become the fail melanin, which is the, the reddish-orange uh, pigment. So let's go this pathway first. Okay, so if we have DOPA, this enzyme is going to turn it into dopaquinone, and then this membrane-bound uh, enzyme, uh, TRIP1, will turn dopaquinone into the brown pigment, and then this enzyme can turn this brown pigment into this black pigment. So um, if this enzyme is not functional, then you'll only be able to produce the brown pigment and not the black pigment. And also you can have different numbers and amounts of any of these enzy enzymes as well. So now you know how to, you can make a brown pigment and a black pigment, but what about the reddish orange pigment? So if the DOPA, instead of going this way, gets acted on by this enzyme, you'll make cystinyl DOPA, which is an intermediate so then this enzyme can work on cystinyl dopa and produce the phao melanin. So now you have all the three different kinds of pigments that could occur in skin. So the different amounts of these three pigments can account for how much pigment and what color the pigments are in the melanosome, which is going to affect how much pigment is in the skin cell. And then, of course, you have the, um, this proton pump which changes the pH of this whole environment, which can affect the function of these enzymes. And then another um, factor is, of course, going to be the shape of the um, MC1R receptor so that it can bind the different signaling proteins differently so that you can signal the genes to produce more or less of all of these enzymes. So you can see that skin color is really a complicated process and that mutations in any of these genes can cause either more or less of these proteins or these proteins to have slightly different shapes or some of these proteins to be more active than others which will give you different concentrations of these different pigments and of course the environment is also involved because you'll get more of the um, signaling molecules if you have skin uh, damage from UV light you'll get more of the alpha MSH and that will cause you to produce more of these proteins, which will give you more pigment.